Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gina Nisanoff. I'm with Complete Healing for Your Mind, Body, and Spirit. As a psychic medium reading for people for about 23 years, I get asked a lot of questions. One question that comes up quite often and I'd like to shed some light on is spirit attachments. There's a big difference between having a spirit attached to you versus having a spirit possession, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So what is the difference between a spirit attachment? Do you know? Well, just like your arms and your legs are attached to your body, an entity can attach to your body, both non-human and human entities. So that's the point of difference. A spirit attachment is, is an attachment versus a possession. And a possession is where you, an entity, both, phys both human and non-human, can actually take physical possession of your body. So that's really the point of difference. And most people, believe it or not, have about approximately two to three entities attached to them. A lot of times, little spirits don't make their way to the other side. We would like to believe that they transition, and a lot do, but sometimes they come back to visit. A lot of them, believe it or not, enjoyed having a physical body and often want to get a need met. So they all attach themselves to everyday people. They attach themselves to children. They attach themselves to mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, everyone. So how does that happen? How do we get spirit attachments? Well, we can get them a number of ways. Attachments happen all the time. A lot of people that go into hospitals, most people are very, very sick in the hospital. We have our immune systems are down. Our auric field is open. And it makes it very easy for an attachment to attach themselves to you when you're in an altered state of consciousness. Entity attachments can happen, for instance, if you're going and visiting historical sites. My um, oldest son, when he was about 10 years old, went to the Gettysburg battlefield and landed up getting a spirit attachment of a Civil War soldier that stayed with him for quite a while until it was removed. So those are just a couple of examples of how we get attachments. Um, how do they affect us? Well, that's a good question. They affect you in, in sometimes major ways, sometimes minor ways. It depends upon what is attached itself to you. A lot of times um, it's easier to recognize an attachment in someone else. Sometimes uh, some of the things that you can look for or that you'll notice is someone will act kind of out of sorts. Um, someone that has never smoked before all of a sudden will begin smoking. Uh, somebody who has never on a health kick will all of a sudden, you know, go running, go, you know, start a big head, something that's kind of out of character for them. And that's kind of the telltale sign of there's another somebody else working here. So if you have an attachment, they don't necessarily take control of your life, but they do kind of add a little influence to it. Um, and it depends, like I said, most entities attach themselves because they need a, meet, a need met. Sometimes people that enjoy drinking when they were had a physical body will attach themselves to somebody who is a drinker or somebody who will become a drinker um, or have the, the tendencies or have the desire to drink all of a sudden, which would be out of character for them. And that's one of the tall tale signs of an attachment. Another one is you'll hear people say something and they don't even remember saying it. Oh, did I say that? Oh, yeah, I guess I did. I don't remember, or do something just out of sorts, out of what their normal characteristics will be. And that's another tall tale sign of an entity attachment uh, kind of coming through. So are, are they benign or, you know, are they serious? It just depends upon, um, you know, some entities will attach themselves for a short period of time. Some will come and go, and some will stay with people for a long, long time. It just depends. It's entirely up to them, believe it or not. Or you, if you recognize that you have an attachment or someone else has an attachment, um, you can come to a holistic practitioner like myself, such as myself. I've been trained in spirit releasement. I've done spirit releasements remotely and in person. And it's a very gentle process. We usually take someone to a light trance 
state because the entity is not down deep. It's actually right on the surface because they're not in possession of the physical body. They are just attached to it. So it makes it fairly simple to remove. We engage in with the little spirit and explain to them that, you know, that this isn't their body and it's time for them to kind of move on. And most entities do when they realize that there's, you know, it is time for them to move and time for them to go meet their loved ones on the other side. A lot of them will go to the light. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just choose to say, say la vie and jump on another person. It just depends upon them. They really do have their own little characteristics and their own personalities. Met quite a few. Very interesting. It's all up to them. But they tend to, to be able to let go fairly simply. And for those people that do have it removed, a lot of people experience a sense of loss initially because most people have had attachments for quite a long time. Example, my son, for instance, he had an attachment from age 10 to age 21. And so when this Civil, Sol Civil War soldier was removed, my son no longer had a shoulder pain, but he also felt kind of a piece of him kind of gone and uh, felt um, very uh, kind of melancholy about that. And that's, that's quite normal. But it really is a gentle process to get them removed. And most of them said t tend to be, you know, they were human at one time. They had lives. They had families. They had interests. They had everything that we have. But they just don't have a physical body. So, you know, they tend to be very, very loving, kind, kind spirits.